Well, let's say you've tested the transistor and you find it to be bad, and now you have to come up with a replacement part. You have to come up with a substitution part. It's not always real easy to find the exact right transistor. Uh, turning to Blue Book, let's look at uh, page R7, I think it is, or maybe R8. On transistors here. R7. R7 is the one, and that's the TO3 package. Shows you a little picture of the TO3 package up here. I like the one that I gave you. <clears throat> Transistors have um, basically the same specifications as diodes do. That is, they're rated by voltage and current. The voltage rating of a transistor is exactly the same thing as the voltage rating of a diode. It's not how much it puts out, it's the maximum it can handle. You know, if I have a 100 volt transistor, I can use it in any circuit up to 100 volts. I can use it in a 5 volt circuit, I can use it in a 10 volt circuit, I can use it in a 99 volt circuit, but I can't use it in a 150 volt circuit. Remember that in the diode, we call the voltage rating the PRV, the peak reverse voltage, or PIV, remember that? We have yet another name for the voltage rating of a transistor. Now, there are actually many different voltage ratings for transistors. There's only one that we really care about as far as, our, as, far as we're concerned. And it's known as V for voltage, sub CEO. Remember, these little letters here are called subscripts, subscript, and they further describe what we mean by the big letter. In other words, V, obviously, this is the voltage rating. It's the voltage rating from the collector to emitter when the base is open. That's what that, that O means. Well, if the base is open, is the transistor on or off? It's off, right? Oh, good, Mel. There you go. Sure. If the uh, if the if the trans if the base is open, the transistor is turned off. So if you want to, you can think of that as meaning off. The voltage from collector to emitter when the transistor is turned off. Uh, but of course, that's when the transistor is blocking the voltage, isn't it? When it's turned off, that's when it's blocking it and it's not allowing it to flow. Sometimes you'll see this listed as BV for breakdown voltage. V sub CEO, BV sub CEO, same thing. This is the voltage rating, the main voltage rating of the transistor. Number two, current. Remember we use the letter I for current. In this case, it's called I sub C, the collector current. Remember, that's what they call the main current flow in a transistor. The current that flows from collector to emitter is called I sub C, the collector current, the main current flow in the transistor. And the current rating of a transistor is exactly the same as a diode. It's the maximum amount of current that you can put through uh, the transistor from collector to emitter without it burning up. And of course, physically, the larger it is, the more current it can handle. Substituting transistors is exactly the same as substituting diodes. If you have a transistor and you need to get a replacement for it, you can always use a transistor of the same or higher voltage or current ratings. Always. You can go up as high as you want in voltage. You can go up as high as you want in current. All transistors work exactly the same way. The, the only difference is these ratings. But there's one more weird specification for transistors that you got to know about. And it's something known as the gain of the transistor also referred to as the beta, B-E-T-A. 
the gain of the transistor is the transistor's ability to amplify. And I'm going to kind of lie to you at first and, t and tell you something that's not, not exactly perfectly true, but, but I'll, I'll, I'll clarify it later just to make it uh, convenient for you. You know how when we were doing this experiment over here, the teeniest, tiniest change in voltage on the base produced this much larger change on the collector. You know, just well, like we went, you know, we, we, at 0.66, the thing was dim, but at 0.7, just 400 volts later, it was a full bright, and we had the, 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 the collector drop to zero volts. It only takes a fraction of a volt change on the base to produce a much larger change between the collector and the emitter. Uh, remember when we did the experiment, just four hundredths of a volt change on the, uh, on the base produced a three volt change on the collector, didn't it? Remember that from, from just a few minutes ago? Uh, well, that's kind of what we're talking about, although not really. Um, it really has to do with the amount of current not voltage, but I'll tell you more about that later on. Anyway, what gain is, is how itty bitty of a change on the base will produce how big of a change on the collector, basically. How sensitive is the transistor? Well, let's look at the transistor that you have here. Let's look at the, uh, the 2N3055. It's the big transistor that I gave you. Um. Yeah. Randy, yeah. I have one of those because I turned it in last time with all the other You accidentally turned it in? Yeah. Yeah, I'll give it to you in a second. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to look at it to do this. The big transistor that I gave you, if you look at the part number on it, it says 2N3055. This is a really common transistor. It's probably one of the most common transistors in the world, actually. So let's look it up on the chart on page R7. As a matter of fact, well here, I'll, I'll give this to you, Claude, because if, if you can conveniently pull out your transistor, I do want you to look at it, actually. I think you just sold the other one. <laughs> okay, it, it, do you see the part number on it, 2N3055? Yeah. Remember the two is the number of PN junctions. Remember that, I mentioned that yesterday. The number, the N just means it's a semiconductor. The number, you can't tell anything about the specifications by the number. It's just a number. You've got to look it up. Uh, there's another number on your part. What's that other number? 9148. That ain't the part number, teen guys and gals. That 9148 is the date code. It's, the t it's when it was manufactured. It was manufactured um, on the 48th week of 1981. 91, sorry. <laughs> sorry. God, I guess so. The 48th week of 1991. Uh, so, um, you know, meaning, you know, somewhere around the beginning of December. Um, be careful about this. Almost every part has a date code on it in addition to the part number. So, if you see a number that's the last two digits are 52 or less and the first two digits look like a year, you're not looking at the part number. Every now and then I get this call from somebody, Randy, I'm trying to find this transistor. Yeah, what's the part number? It's a 9016. Oh, no such transistor. Yeah, man, I'm looking at it right here. God damn it, it's a 9, 9016. No, 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 that's a date code. The reason they put date codes on there, it's not like, it's not like milk, you know, where it'll go bad. The reason they put date codes on is that if they have a bad run of parts, like, you know, something happens, something, all the parts are failing for that week. They can recall that one lot, that one lot, that one production. It's like you hear every now in the news, you know, uh, uh, recalling Tylenol, lot number GB6X503 or whatever it is, same kind of deal. It's just an indicator so they know which batch this transistor came from in case they have a recall and they've got to recall them. Otherwise, they'd have to recall them all. So be aware of that. You, that's not the part number. And you'll see that same date code on integrated circuits as well. So be, be aware of that. So let's find that 2N3055. And if you look at your chart on page R7, there's obviously two charts here. On the very top of the right-hand side, you see under device type, 
Do you see NPN mm -hmm. 2 n 3055 right there on the top? Right next to it under PNP, it says MJ2955. This is the same part with the same specifications, same voltage, current, and all that stuff, but opposite polarity. It's PNP instead of NPN. It's called a complementary pair. You don't really have to know that, but it's called a complementary pair. Two transistors with the exact same specifications, but opposite polarities. They are not interchangeable in any way. You can never interchange uh, an NPN for a PNP under any circumstances, no way, no how, nowhere. All right? But we use complementary pairs occasionally. For instance, um, in a jukebox amplifier, uh, there's usually two output transistors for each channel, left and right. Those are almost always complementary pairs. One's NPN, one's PNP. It's what they commonly call a push-pull circuit. Um, you don't really have to know that either. But uh, two transistors, same specs, opposite polarity. They're not interchangeable. Well, let's take a look at the specifications here for the 2N3055. <coughs> On the far left-hand column is the current rating. What's the current rating of this transistor? 15 amp. So it's a 15 amp transistor. In fact, let me just write this in red so that we can easily see it. It's a 15 amp transistor, meaning it can handle anything up to 15 amps. The next column over is V sub CEO, the voltage rating, which is what? 60, 60 volts. So this is a 60 volt, 15 amp transistor. It can handle anything up to um, 15 amps, anything up to 60 volts. And then if you look over here under the gain, HFE is the gain. The gain is abbreviated H sub FE. I don't know, I have no idea what that actually stands for. Uh, and what is the gain of this transistor? It's 20 slash 70. 